You know, Chris, if we were having this conversation about Florida State football a year ago, let's say we're sitting in the same spot, it's a year ago, not a whole lot of people would have been too happy with Mike Norvell. Now, there were people out there that could see that there was progress, but it wasn't necessarily reflected in the win column. You know, how is your thought process and your evaluation of Mike Norvell uh, kind of evolved from the, the starting point of him being hired through these few seasons? Well, I, I will start with this. So I've known Mike since he was at Memphis. Um, I actually uh, helped a, a specific fellow get to him, a running back by the name of Tony Pollard. Uh, so I, I've known of Mike for quite some time. Um, you know, and a lot of people, they thought that he just inherited a 10-win football team in Memphis and um, and maybe he did, but he didn't inherit the greatest culture. The locker room wasn't that great. So just living around there and listening to fans that were on the inside and also people that worked with him, because um, Memphis is a city, but it's very small at the same time, so everybody talks to each other. Um, so to hear how he was from that fan base, when I found out that Florida State hired him, I was ecstatic, to be completely honest, especially when we went through what we just went through um, with one coach that had a tenure of winning a national title, another guy that comes in that it didn't quite work out. Um, so when we made the hire of Mike Norvell, I was ecstatic. And I had started right away on my show explaining to people. It's actually what made me start my show. I started explaining to people right away, this is going to take two to four years, and we'll start seeing real progress again. And Florida State's going to start getting back to that, that eliteness and winning and what Coach Norvell is going to build is going to be special. We just have to give him time. He's he's known for building a foundation. He's known for creating a culture in the locker room, and it, it was very it was very insightful to me to when I moved here literally uh, twelve days before Norvell was announced and moved to Tallahassee. So I moved from Memphis literally twelve days before he did to the Tallahassee area. Then he turned around 12 days later and moved to the Tallahassee area. So it was it was really odd that that happened. It's all pure coincidence. It wasn't anything planned. But um, I, I will say that a lot of people were worried because, you know, the, the first season being COVID season, and, you know, a lot of people say we don't count that. Or a lot of people will say, you know, that's week or year zero don't count it because of the circumstances that happened. But there were multiple programs that had a new coach in COVID year, and they performed better than Florida State did, uh, especially on the win columns. So uh, they a lot of people were like, well, wait a minute. This guy was here only one year, but they won X amount of games. Um, what's what's wrong in Tallahassee? And what I was trying to get through to people was is it wasn't necessarily the coaches. It wasn't necessarily the staff. It was just the culture had been broke down over time with everything that was going on. Uh, you you got a pro style coach that had pro style guys in there. Then you got a widespread guy that more or less wanted speed in there. And he recruited guys to that nature. And then you got Mike Norvell coming in. He has a very specific type of athlete that he goes after for every position. And I knew we just didn't have the, uh, the Jimmy and Johns that we needed or Jimmy and Joe's, what everybody says. Um, we didn't have those guys to run his offense and defense the way that I knew so he had to start building that foundation and building that culture. So I was just trying to keep people, fans, I was trying to keep them patient on the growth and foundation of what Norvell was doing. So that's that's pretty much how I seen it. 